Uh, I wanted to ask, this is sort of a funny question because uh, first season we had the mask, the, you know, I, I oh, don't her mask. Season two, Joe Carroll mask. Is there going to be a different set of masks that the following? I never want to see another mask ever. Okay. <laughs> no, there will not be another mask. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Quick, I, quick and easy question. Okay. And question answer. So what can you tease us about season three? We've um, got you for limited time. <laughs> I, I think that there's, season three is really... Uh, a true reboot and evolution of the show. We were challenged with the idea of how do you sustain a series like this, right? So you start looking at what can we do to relaunch it in a way where at the end of season three, our audience can go, oh, wow, there's a lot more than we thought was there. And um, some of that is just, we starting with, start that with Ryan Hardy. It, in season two, we jumped ahead a year and said, He's sober, he's healthy, he's uh, he's in a new place, you think everything is good, and then you open up the secret room and you realize he's not over it, he's still obsessed, and he hasn't really evolved. Season three, we jump ahead a year, and he has evolved. And he is a different person, and he has a lot of regrets, and he's done a lot of bad things in the last two years, and he's trying to move forward. Uh, so, dealing with that, how does he deal with that? And then these things happen, like they do on the following, and... Um, I think because of what we set up, the audience will automatically think, oh, I, I know what it is, it's Joe. And that's where we surprise you, because it has to do with Joe, but it's not Joe. And, you know, it's the only real spoiler I can give you, but I will say that we're going to go back to the roots of season one, where you really never knew who was bad. Uh, the idea was... Um, uh, Jennifer's line that she keeps saying to us was, like, let's put the shark back under the water. You're standing in the boat, you know it's there, but you don't know where it is, and that's terrifying. And we had that in season one, because every new character that showed up, our audience would be like, they're bad, they're bad. And you can play with them that way. We went away from that in season two, because it was more of a manhunt. So we're going to go back to that psychological thriller. Will it be as scary and murdery and bloody as... It'll be, I, I think it'll be scarier, um, because I think there are elements of season one that were scarier. It's the unknown. You know, you don't have to see something to be terrified. Um, a, a, you know what a good example is? We're going to be in New York a lot, and we want to really create this sense of urban paranoia. And I was doing research on things that caused that, and one serial killer, if you look back at the... Um, could be the Son of Sam or the Zodiac Killer, but I, I landed on the DC Sniper, and I read all these articles, you know, someone's pumping gas at a gas station, and they're shot in the head, and nobody knew where the shot came from because they're in a rural area. You didn't know it was coming from the trunk of a car that was driving by, or you're in a mall carrying stuff to your car, and you get shot. Once the second killing happened, DC was paralyzed. They, you know, everyone is like, I don't know where I'm safe. I can't go to the gas station, I can't go to the mall, I can't go to the store. Real sense of urban paranoia, that's terrifying. And you don't see anything. So we're going to have that. In, it's a nice layer to the show. So I'm excited about really scaring people without having to see too much of the gore. I think in the manhunt last year and in the set pieces that we had, we saw a lot of blood. And I think the show can evolve a little bit and not, let's try to do it without seeing as much blood. How do you come about envisioning some of these I guess elaborate killings. I mean, do you go to a supermarket one day, step out and see someone, you know, putting it's in It's a combination. You know, we, we do, we have an um, FBI, uh, we have an FBI liaison, and they share with us a lot of, um, of past cases. So you look at stuff that's really happened, and sometimes you look at stuff that. Uh, <laughs> I have it up. Sometimes you just make it stuff up. <laughs> so it, it's a combination of the two. Well, now that you guys are back here, um, I'm curious to know, your roles have kind of switched, uh, evolved, I should say, not fully switched. Who will, be, who will be in season three? Who will be more of a moral compass, you know, in terms of the goings on and, and hunting down whatever may come? Uh, well, I think that, you know, at the end of season two, certainly that was one of the episodes of Brian's character that he finally sort of realizes that he has to have at least some kind of moral compass about himself. He starts to feel like he's got blood on his hands and feels like he can truly get past this obsession with Joe Carroll. I think he starts to question, uh, you know, maybe what his methods have been in the past. And and then uh, hand in hand with that, he sees this this uh, sort of monster that he's created in Mike. 
uh, who has become a version of him. So I would think that logically, you know, I would be the one that would become sort of more of a moral compass for, for, for Mike, but I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe it's maybe it's neither one of us, you know, maybe it's Max. <laughs> yeah, it might be. <laughs> it's hard to say. So can you talk about what uh, Mike and Max's relationship will be? Yeah, I mean, I think you've probably already heard that we sort of pick up a year after the fact, and uh, as we saw in the, the last episode, there's a connection, there's a romance definitely budding, and, um, you know, I, without knowing too much about, you know, where it's going to go, I think it's, you know, uh, fairly safe to say that it's not going to be an easy relationship. Uh, <coughs> these guys met during a very stressful and traumatic time, and so I think that they definitely have feelings for each other, there's definitely a connection. I think the fun of it uh, and the drama of, of the relationship as it goes forward is, is how is it going to work out? How, you know, Mike still has this revenge bubbling underneath and Max has watched him nearly beat one of the twins to death and, and execute Lily. So I'm sure that th there's going to be things they need to work through. Um, and so I think that's, you know, what's going to make it interesting. And, and I, I think Mike is going to want to hold on to that that sort of goodness, that, that light that that relationship might provide for him, but he's got a lot of stuff to deal with before, you know, it can, it can be a full-fledged, easy-going relationship, I'm sure. Yeah. How has the sort of family actions of this show sort of surprised Sipo Tito? Um, well, you know, I had nothing really to compare it to in terms of television, only, only movies, and, and one of the things that's so great about uh, being on television, the fan reaction is not just kind of like, it's like this ongoing thing, you know, and, and, and also the, the, you know, the connection with social media now is sort of one of the great things about it, is to actually see what people are responding to and think of the story was. But, you know, Comic-Con is, is, is sort of the ultimate connecting with fans, venue, you know, and today, you know, it made me realize we're sitting there timing is so great because here's this, you know, hall age of people that took their time to come here and to spend the time with us and they really are looking, truly looking forward to the show and we start shooting in a couple of weeks even though we don't want to go on the air until January. So it's a good kick in the ass I think mm -hmm. and it's also a good reminder that this is, these are the people that we're making this for, you know. We're not making it for the critics. And we're not making it for you know award consideration and all those other things. And we're trying to make a show that's going to make these people that are sitting in the audience give them some entertainment, you know, at least escape, whatever. And and that's a you know responsibility that that we have as uh, performers and, and directors and producers and everything. So it's 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 great you know to leave the situation like this and say you know, let's get back out, start hitting the heart because we work in a little bit of a bubble. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we see each other and, and, and especially since we're not on the air until January, so we do show up, show up, show, and all we have to go on is like yeah, it felt good. Yeah, you know, we talk about things amongst ourselves, and so it's easy to forget that there's people out there who are literally hanging on every decision right. because it means something. And then you come here and you look at wow. We actually care about every little Story thing that we're yeah. doing. And you do feel responsible. What's that like not being able to do anything about it immediately until like the next season to address any? We're going to have to respond. Well, we. Well, since we go on in January, we still have another couple of months of shooting. So we probably after from January on, we do about five more episodes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean. I'm not saying that everything that you know everybody says on Twitter immediately we, we change, but but it, it is it is you know someone asked about when they asked a lot about story next year who's going to do what who's going to do this the thing that uh, is true certainly about our show is that it is uh, it's a it's a morphs you know it changes as as storylines start to work. And, you get reactions and people start to do things like Kevin Williamson was talking about it. and the Hill character and how, you know, in the, in the pilot she just kind of had like a couple of lines or something and, and then became this, you know, amazing villain, you know, that, that 
was so important. So even smaller characters like Jordy in the pilot mm -hmm. yeah. had one scene in a computer with yeah. you know and with the dogs, and we never expected him to grow. Even though he was only in a few episodes, he had a tremendous part on the show. Yeah. He meant something to the audience, and he was terrifying. And, uh, yeah. That was a great discovery for us. So you have to kind of be thinking on your feet in terms of that. What can you say about um, Joe's love interest? I mean, not um, Ryan's love interest for season three. We've heard a little bit about it. Well, he loves Joe. We just don't. They still in love? Yeah. What, what can you say about Ryan? to wrap the your question and then we'll have to Okay, what, what can you well, say we, about we, Ryan's love Ryan interest? Ryan has a new love interest and she has a, a, a daughter and I think yeah, we're thinking that this is the woman that he may, may might be the woman for him and uh, unlike season two where we thought he had evolved and we thought he was over everything and you open a secret room and you realize he's not over it in season three he really is. He really has moved forward. So it's the first time that we see Ryan um, able to open up to someone. Who's the actress playing his love interest? Oh, we can't say yet. Okay. Don't know yet. Don't, Don't know yet. Okay. What do you think about it? Uh, what do I think about what? Having a love interest. Awesome. It's great. <laughs> but I, I'll tell you this, though. I, 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 as Marcus will remember, the, the idea came up. Uh, in, into season two, and I was really resistant about the idea of there being some kind of domesticity, and, you know, and you know, really, you know, and I, I just, I wasn't ready. Like, I didn't feel like I was ready yet as a, as a character to not be an island, you know, because there's so much of who, who I envisioned the guy as. The you person. actually said that's not who Ryan is. Yeah, I said that's not who he is, and and then it, after going through <laughs> season two, like the idea was. I, all of a sudden I was like, yeah, that's good. I like it. I like it. I like it. Yeah, um, George Clooney can get engaged in real life. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Hardy can like live with the one with the kid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.